Well, so they didn't start to burn and pillage until they decided, you know, well, all right, we have to teach them a lesson. The Ku Klux decided they, we have to teach them a lesson. So actually, we as children didn't hear any noise or any shots the night of the 31st of May. But on June 1st, they began to systematically destroy neighborhoods. And they had airplanes dropping things down on people's houses, and they had made up their minds to clear the entire area of black people. So most of the people fled. Uh, they, you know, when they saw houses burning and the streets behind them, they left. But my mother, was determined not to flee. And she poured water on everything she could put water on, trying to make the house safe so it wouldn't burn. But the first thing they did when the militia came was to take all the men, and they took my eight-year-old brother too, to a place, a bullpen or some place uh, where they were holding all the black men. And we didn't know, because we lived on one side of town and they lived on the other, we didn't know they weren't doing the same thing, the militia. You have to obey the militia, so we thought they were locking up the non-blacks too. But it so happened that it didn't occur that way. What they did was to disarm and lock up all black men. And then they said to the mob, there's nothing out there now but women and children, so you can do whatever you want to do. And that was when the real terrible things started to happen because they would invade your house. And my mother <laughs> had a very strong will. She was a Tuskegee graduate, and uh, she had been trained to teach. But uh, she decided, well, we have to eat no matter what's happening out there in the world. So she had three triangular pots that you could put three pots on one gas eye on the stove. So she was cooking and she made biscuits and they were in the oven. Well, when the crowd came in to pillage and burn, they were infuriated because here's this woman cooking cream of wheat and making applesauce and make and cooking biscuits instead of being terrified and running from us. So I think they thought they had to teach us a special lesson. So they, they first they took the food out. Of course, the children are cowering under this big oak table where my mother had put us. And then we saw them take our food out and throw it in the dirt. And then they came back and got the biscuits and took them out and stomped them in the dirt. And then they came back in to destroy whatever they didn't want to take with them. So they went after my sister's piano. They didn't know that it's the sounding board of a piano that is important. So they just took hatchets and chopped at the piano. It was upright. And uh, then they went after the phonograph. And my mother had records. so. They first selected all the Caruso records, which she loved as dearly as she loved her children, and they broke up the Caruso records, but they didn't break the old rugged cross. They were trying to give us a message, and uh, I've often said they didn't break Paul Robeson, and they didn't break Roland Hayes, because they didn't know who they were. <laughs> you see, if they had known those were black artists, they would have smashed those first, you know. And they took, my, like, my mother's luggage, but they didn't take my sister's little wicker basket that she brought home from college. And uh, they had already pillaged the downtown that, you know, was dubbed Black Wall Street. It was, it was a prosperous neighborhood, but it wasn't a Wall Street. And my father's store was very well stocked, so they took everything they could take and they had horses and buggies and different things to carry things in. And then they destroyed the building, which my dad was renting. He didn't own the building on Greenwood. And uh, they 
it was reduced to rubble, actually. So my parents were very distressed because here they are with five kids, and the schools had been. I went to Dunbar School, and that was reduced to just rubble. I mean, they blew it up, and they blew up, they burned, and, and the furniture, I guess, in the school, and blew the school up. And so my parents were very concerned about having five kids and no school, and my father was walking around through the rubble, you know, I guess morning, and he said his safe looked all right. It didn't look destroyed. So he went over to the safe. It was too big for them to carry on a horse, you know, and so uh, he went over to the safe and worked his combination, and everything was intact. But he didn't have cash, he didn't keep cash in there, but he had other people's money. People who were lucky and or in some way would come and bring a little bag of money and put their name and address on, say, Mr. Hooker, keep this till I need it. And so he had a, a chance to give people back all the ones he could find. y'all mad stay mad as john Clark say don't get mad get smart so what did those negroes do what did those africans do what did those black people do when your children walk through the burnt wreckage of their grocery stores looking for bubble gum and pennies after you drop bombs on them in june 1921 what did they do after that they rebuilt. Not only did they rebuild, by the third decade after it happened, by the early 50s, so-called Greenwood District and Black Wall Street, this is a uh, Carlos Hill, brand new book, 1921, Race Massacre, A Photographic History, Tulsa Massacre. By the time you get to that, did y'all know Black Wall Street was bigger than it was in 1921? I'm talking about literally bigger, more businesses, more profitable in the 1950s. But see, as a footnote in white history, the first thing, the reason we talk about it is because you're gonna own up to the crime of 21. But see, in America, it's easier. Okay, the crime of 21. Okay, all right, yeah, you're right. Okay, fine. Okay. I mean, we'll, we'll, okay, we'll, we'll pause, we'll acknowledge it, we'll put together a commission, we'll even make an HBO series and you can think about it and cry and, you know, we'll have Henry Louis Gates in a hologram and you can find your family and, you know, Regina King does an amazing job and I love Watchmen and all this kind of, but pause. Well, what about when they rebuilt it bigger? Huh? <laughs> you know what happened to it after that? Same thing that happened to George Floyd's ancestors' land, the same thing that happened to the land of everybody but Sarah Rector, apparently damn near, the same thing that happened that gave them the ability to build it the first time in Tulsa. You know what happened? The same thing that happened in Nashville, the same thing that happened in Charlotte, North Carolina, the same thing that happened in Durham, North Carolina, the same thing that happened in Atlanta and New Orleans. You attacked Greenwood in Tulsa the same way you attacked everything else. You call it urban renewal. You call it lack of access to capital. This is not, there's no mystery. But see, if you call it Black Wall Street in 1921, you could put it off on bombs and airplanes and shotguns. 
and ignore the deeper issue, which is the structural violence of this separate colony against black people.